Hey guys, this is Jim, KN4YCD, and you're watching FUP Loves Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Today I want to do a quick video and discuss briefly and explain what SWR is and its closely associated friend, return loss. So these two things are something that as hams we, we should be concerned about, and everybody knows that the lower your SWR is, the better your signal is, right? And for the most part, that is exactly true. But what is SWR and what is return loss? So let's, uh, let's talk about that. So we have an antenna system, and our antenna is here, and it's an awesome DX Commander 27000, and it has some radials, and it has a feed line that's going to our radio. And our radio is an awesome radio, doesn't matter what it is, and it's a 100-watt radio. So we hook up our antenna to our radio, and we check our SWR, either via the radio's built-in functions or via an external method like a rig expert or a nano VNA. And we find that we have, at a given frequency band, something like, I don't know, let's say uh, an SWR of 1.5. All right? So what that means is that at that frequency, with that SWR, we're going to have some amount of return loss. Return loss is also called reflected power. So we have 100 watts going out of our antenna system, and then we have 4 watts, based on this instance, coming back. So that 4 watts is coming back and bouncing into our into our radio it's bleeding out some of its heat and uh, the rest of that power is coming back toward the radio so this can be alleviated a lot of ways but the more resonant your antenna the less you have to worry about this you'll hear people talk about common mode current this reflected power is common mode current this is what we don't want and the more of this we have the worse our situation is going to be so we've hooked up our super cool antenna to our radio and we find that on another frequency uh, we have an SWR of two and we shrug our shoulders and go, okay, I can live with, uh, I can live with two SWR. That's not too bad, right? It's only a half an SWR point above 1.5. So it can't be too shabby, right? Except we find out now that our reflected power is 11%. So out of our 100 watt signal, we're now down to 89 watts of output power. And when you factor in other things like insertion loss and cable loss over the distance of our, our from our shack to our antenna system, you're going to lose some more power because there's going to be some amount of dB of loss per 100 feet of your coax. And depending on your coax, that could be a fairly significant amount. That varies with frequency as well. Let's take a look at this slide here that I have, and let's 86 the whiteboard and bring that up. So here's an easy chart that I found online. Uh, thank you, Roden Swartz, because I'm entirely too lazy to make a beautiful chart like this. And this is a graph of our reflected power percentage versus our output power. So in our example, we're using 100 watts. So let's say we have 100 watts of output power on our radio, like we just talked about, and we have an SWR of 1.5. That means we're going to have 4% reflected power. And this varies by frequency, right? So I may have different results at a different on a different band, and generally I will, uh, better or worse, but it's some function of reflected power. That SWR of 1.5 is only 4% reflected power, a 2.0 SWR is 11%. So now our 100 watt radio is down to 89 watts, like I said earlier. 3.0 SWR, which is kind of kind of the cutoff for all of us as hams. It certainly is for me. I'm not going to mess around with anything above a 3.0 SWR for several reasons. But 25% loss at a 3.0 SWR. So that 100 watt signal has now been pushed down to 75 watts of radiated power and the other 25 watts is reflecting back toward my rig or being dissipated as heat, right? So we can see that that is a huge deal. Well, what makes this? Well, it is literally the signal reflecting back 
from an insufficient or um, non-matched impedance on the antenna end of your entire radio system. So I have a little video, thank you, Roden Swartz, that uh, has a beautiful graphic that explains that, so let's take a look at that right now. Here, the blue trace is the forward wave voltage, the red trace is the reflected wave voltage, and the purple trace is the combined voltage on the line. Note that the amplitudes of the forward and reverse voltage remain constant, but the amplitude of the combined voltage trace, the purple trace, rises and falls over time, creating what's referred to as a standing wave. Voltage standing wave ratio is simply the ratio of the highest to the lowest voltages in our standing wave. In this example, the peak value is 3 and the minimum value is 1, so we have a visoir of 3. All right, so when we're, when we're setting up our radio in our antenna system, what is one way you can make sure you have an impedance match with your radio? So let's draw that out. We have our antenna system, our DX Commander 1 million, and it's the most awesome antenna in the world. And we've got a field chock full of radials, and we're running our coax back to our radio, and because of whatever reasons, we don't have a perfect match on all these bands. And you're almost never going to have a perfect match on every band of any antenna. You'll have a good enough SWR, but you'll never have a perfect match. It's, that's pretty much a unicorn. So how can we fix that so that we can protect our radio from trying to transmit if our SWR is above 1.0, which it's almost always going to be? That's where we put in a matching network. So a matching network, another fancy word for a matching network, is an antenna tuner. And this will allow us to match this impedance on this side to the radio side. So it will present a 50 ohm impedance to the radio for us. All right? Now... This is pre presenting our 50 ohm impedance, and that's great. But keep in mind, you're not tuning the antenna. You're tuning the radio. This has given us 50 ohms between here and here, but this is still going to be some value that's not 50 ohms impedance. So we're still going to have some sort of SWR mismatch from here to here. But it's better than the alternatives, right? It's better than a high SWR because you'll get all the power out of your radio and we're gonna try and radiate it, there's still gonna be reflective power. So this will also, to some extent, protect your radio from any reflected power coming back at you, any return loss. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about here with this is we all know or should know that you don't transmit on your radio without some sort of load on it. So once again, we have our super cool non-drifting radio it could be a Flex, it could be an Icom, a Yesu, a Kenwood, and a Linko. It doesn't matter. This works for all the radios. And this radio, again, is our 100-watt radio. And we have our antenna connection on it. Actually, we have two antenna connections because this is a super cool radio. And one of these antenna connections goes out to our antenna system that's outside. And again, this is the DX Commander 1 million. And... Of course, we have our radials, and the Smokin' Ape did a live stream on Sunday, which you should go watch, where he talked about radials and counterpoise and how that affects your signal in an antenna system. And it's a great video. You should watch it. T.O. and I um, joined him on that, and we had a great discussion about that. So I, I absolutely recommend that video, and I'll put a, a link to it in the thing below, and I'll try and recommend it in the you know, graphic somewhere on this video. But check out the link, the description below. So on our on our awesome radio, we have an antenna connected, and, and we don't have anything connected over here. This is a good match. This is a, a very awesome impedance match. We have close to 50 ohms here at the antenna system, and we're running, let's say, 1.2 to 1.7 SWR on all of our different bands and life is sunshine and puppies. It's all great. So we have very close to our impedance match, which affects our reflected power, our return loss. 
and we're getting good signal out of this system and we can make great DX. But because we have a cool radio, we have two antenna connectors on it. And what happens if I accidentally switch to this antenna connector and I transmit with no load on it? Then you essentially have infinite impedance. And if you have infinite impedance, then you have 100% return loss, all right? So that 100% return loss, as this signal goes out, guess what's gonna happen since it's reflecting? It's all gonna come back into your radio. Some of it will be dissipated as heat. You may not get 100 watts back. You're gonna get some amount of power going back into the antenna connection on the radio. Now, a lot of radios theoretically have protections against this, but this is a situation I'm certainly not gonna test on any of my rigs. I don't wanna do it. I mean, it probably will be safe, but let's not do that, okay? So it's very important to have a load on your antenna system, on, on the connectors, whether you have one or two. This is why we don't transmit, because if this is either a dead short or, or wide open, we will have infinite impedance and you will get 100% power reflected back into your radio and this will could possibly blow the final amplifi amplification stage, say that three times fast, this could possibly blow the final amplifier stage of your rig. So you will have a very bad radio day. So that's something you need to make sure that you don't do. If you have multiple antenna connectors, it may not be a bad idea to put a dummy load on each and every one of them so that this doesn't accidentally happen, right? On the ICOM I have, it supports multiple antennas. My Flex supports multiple antennas. Good plan to put a dummy load on each and every one of those so that if I do accidentally key down on the one I'm not using, there's something there to absorb that power. And that's the whole purpose of a dummy load. That's the whole purpose of the antenna system is to accept that power and dissipate it either by RF radiation or by absorbing it and turning it into heat, all right? Thank you for stopping by and watching. Hopefully you got a little something out of this. This is a complex topic. I recommend the Roden Swartz video and I'll put a link to that in the uh, description below. It explains this in a whole lot more detail. There's some fairly straightforward math behind these two things and how they come about and they will they can explain it way better than i can completely so guys thank you for watching i appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up make sure you're subscribed to the channel ring the bell so you get notified whenever i post any new videos have a great day